We are back at my house today diving into another huge project that really needs done, replacing my 25 year old asphalt shingle roof that's shot. We're gonna get going today by stripping the old roof so we can replace it with something new and something way better. Let's get started. I'm gonna get up here and get a couple shots of the existing roof before they tear it off. I got some help here. This is our usual roofers. And they're really fast at tearing shingles off. Would you replace this roof? I would. Okay. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You, you can see the gr gr granule off. Yeah. Remember that starts happening? Oh, wow. Look at that come yeah. off with your foot. It's, um, it's definitely time to change the roof. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, look at how these are just separating. That's crazy. Moment of truth on the sheathing here. Looks mostly good. It's, I think it's three quarter, which is great. Uh, half inch is all you have to put around here. And that's kind of flimsy and gets wavy. So that's great. So here's another thing I was really curious to see is if there was these baffles in the insulation on this vaulted part of my ceiling. It does get hot in there, but I'm glad to see that it is properly done. It's gonna continue to ventilate. I'm just really glad that's there because it's a really hard problem to fix if it's not. Jason's here and he's got these profiles, like the drip edge kind of parts that we've been bending last week. We'll show you those in a second, but we're gonna get them inside. Is there a reason that dumpster's way over there? Yeah, Sarah was parked right there when the guy brought that one, so. What, she's too good to move her truck? <laughs> no, the guy didn't ask. <laughs> now we're gonna have to carry all these shingles. No, 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 no. Yep. No, oh, that's why they're here. That's why you're here. I'm just the layer guy. You're the ground guy. Boom. It's crap, dude. I don't want to raise. I can see whoever did your shingles before did a good job. They got yep. lines chalked every, you know, five feet or so. Yep. Keep things running straight. I like that. I like that they use 30 pound felt. It's three quarter OSB on the roof too. Really? Three quarter? Yeah. Really? Here, look. No. Go have a look, see. I can't believe it. It's good. All right, you got a real roof here. Congratulations. <laughs> Jamie's gonna demonstrate how this underlayment's doing. Yeah, it's like look a, at that. It's, like it's a so weird. Chip. Yeah, I mean it's in good shape as far as like the way it looks, but as far as like mm. this, I'm just like, I mean we don't do this a lot where we tear these apart, but it, it's pretty brittle. You know, you're having fun, aren't you? I mean I'm gonna just keep <laughs> going until there's nothing you're left. Like the kids like take one piece of trash and make fifty out of it. How Thanks. can I? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. You're gonna clean it up anyway. Benson, Benson, he can't find me. Oh, hey. Finally, it took him like 10 minutes. That's working. Yeah, that's not bad. Just, not going just keep scooping it up. There you go, I'll get you a nice pile. Yeah, there you go. I was gonna say, I need more than uh, what I've got there. That, that's working okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here's our first little thing we found that wasn't up to our par standards is the drip edge doesn't even go up to the sheathing. Then the roofing outer limit doesn't go over the drip edge. <laughs> they just nailed that to like the corner of the fascia board. Another thing we're finding here is that the tar paper is lapped like the wrong way in these valleys. Like this should be under that. Yeah, it's lapped so water runs under it. Great so, idea. and again, didn't leak. There's no ice and water shield under that in the valley. Didn't leak. So I, I'm really feeling confident that no matter what we do here, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like okay, you know, compared to that. Bye bye, shingles. Jason's Whoa. dumpster <laughs> diving out of my stuff. Why don't you just burn this thing? You're gonna pay to have it dumped. Well, you burn it. It's just wood. <laughs> All right, you can have it. It's not gonna fit. <laughs> oh, we got it. All right. Jono's going through the yard with this giant magnet 
And so far, this is all the nails he got out of this one spot. Check it out. How many passes have you done? This is my third. Third. I hear it clip. I hear him jumping up on it. Especially right through here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, it looks like there's no nails and then... No, I kept looking and I just kept grabbing and grabbing and... Wow. We've decided we're just gonna leave most of this tar paper. It's fine, we're not worried about the sheathing under it. We've walked all around, it feels good. But we're gonna have to cut it back anywhere we have to put ice and water shield because it needs to stick right down to this OSB and not be stuck to this old underlayment. So that's our next step. Don't let this roofer see me. Like an amateur hour here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We saw you. Yeah, do it. So he oh, he was. I was recording that too. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's he great. Stand to watch I know he couldn't stand to watch me struggle. When you said that, I looked up and he was standing there watching. <laughs> <laughs> On a lot of the valley, the OSB is just nailed to the other OSB. Check this out. See that nail? <laughs> Didn't hold really well. So we're gonna go back and add either a bunch more fasteners or raise using some screws to tie all that back together. And I'm gonna check all the edges actually because really if wind's gonna get underneath some of the sheathing somewhere and rip it off, it's around the edges. So we're just gonna, we should double check it. These are galvanized and ring shank by the way. So they're gonna hold way better. And I got way more of them. It is. It like it. Oh, dude, it's like a It's holding it. I think it is. You think it's steeper than a 12? It's like a 14 and a half, I yeah. think. Yeah, actually, look at it. I think it's like a 14, 12. I don't want to brag. I got the steepest roof in the neighborhood. Freaking all hand drove, too. Like, they actually took hand yeah. drove. I think it's more than 12. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right. Tell me, tell me about tell me again. <laughs> my you know, after shooting a lot of this down around the edges, I think what we got to do is snap some lines across everything and shoot it because I can feel each time I shoot the, the OSB is just getting sucked down. Like it's just floating. So we're going to do that. It's unbelievable how much of a difference this is making re-nailing this. It feel, it's all squeaky and kind of feels loose and now it feels solid. You're supposed to nail the roof? It's not nailed really well till, till you just did. Today's video is brought to you by North One and they are an online business banking and financial management platform designed to help small businesses take control of their cash flow. And if you have a small business, you know it is all about the cash flow. The combination of their product suite plus their service experience can really help to simplify your business operations and it can even teach you better business habits. Amazingly, North One customers have a 75% lower failure rate than the national average. With North One, you can open an FDIC insured deposit account in only three minutes without ever stepping foot in a bank and you can deposit checks, send and receive ACH and wire transfers, budget for taxes and more right from the North One app. You can also automate your admin from budgeting to bookkeeping. And this is the really important bit is making sure that you have the cash on hand that you need to pay for upcoming expenses like payroll or taxes or materials. North One's automated budgeting tool called Envelopes does this for you. Just tap on the Envelopes button in your account, create your custom rules, and North One sets aside a portion of your incoming funds automatically. You can also sync to your QuickBooks account and automate your accounting and say goodbye to manual data entry. And even though North One takes care of all of your business banking needs, it's still way more affordable than other traditional banks. North One customers only pay a flat fee of $10 a month, and there's no hidden fees. That includes free ACH transfers, no overdraft fees, free deposits at over 80,000 locations, and access to 2 million ATMs. If you want to try North One to easily manage your business finance needs, just click the link in our video description, open and fund an account, and you'll automatically get a $10 credit. Thanks again to North One for sponsoring our video. 
let's get back to work. We're renting this from Devin to get the shingles up top. You're welcome, Jason. Oh, oh, it's there. Is that gonna be high enough or are we gonna be reaching down? Got this, it's gonna go all the way up. Okay. And then when you get to the top, this flattens out. So this will be flop, you know. So that down. goes all the way across the top. Yeah. I think that'll be okay. It's not gonna be too low for whoever's gonna. Well, it's a lot better than uh, having to carry them up there. Yeah. I think that's gonna be just fine. There's the motor. You better film that part. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is the only way I'm gonna remember. <laughs> is this gonna catch my bushes on fire? No, no, no. The no, muffler? <laughs> it might. It's a possibility. All right, so this goes there, and this is gonna hook up to this round piece okay. right there. Gotcha. Then you gotta take your hand in here. And I'll get around that pulley. Yeah. Yep, I see that. There we go. Okay. And that's it. Yeah, I um well, I guess no, it's not touching. That'll be alright. Now that the old shingles are off the roof, we can go ahead and start putting down the underlayment to get ready for the new roofing. And here's a basic rundown on that. On this roof, we're using a combination of peel and stick ice and water shield and synthetic roofing underlayment. The roofing underlayment is going to cover most of the surface, but around the perimeter and in the valleys where you're more likely to get damage from an ice dam or something, getting water under the shingle layer, that's where we're going to use the ice and water shield because it's a little bit self-sealing around the nails that you put through the shingles through the underlayment. So that's really important. And on the valleys, we're really going crazy here. We're going to do a two foot wide metal pan flashing down the valley because we can't overlap these shingles they're too thick and it wouldn't really work so you have to separate them you need that metal to protect between it and then on top of that we're going to do a 36 inch out of the valley each way another round of the ice and water shield to really seal everything up oh yeah here's a look at these edge profiles that are going up our gable ends they come out six inches and then go up an inch and a half and then down two and a half with a little kick out and that's so that the cut edges of these shingles as they're coming in aren't exposed like you can't see them because they're hollow and they're not solid so that takes care of that we bent these ourselves at the shop we can cut to a little video of how we made them it's really exciting just to be safe well uh yeah i mean it's not my house but if it was my house this is what i would do i like it that's snug It's been so windy up here and this stuff just and there's nowhere to put it so you know what i've been doing you can no, probably tell I already i can't figure it out i just been <laughs> stuffing that backing up in there wow look at that you've been working out or what i've <laughs> <laughs> been working oh. it doesn't feel good by the way it feels really scratchy that's awful i just threw it right in your tree right there yeah. see that's where i that's right Oh, hey, <laughs> I think Jono and I did not get done. So the sections we didn't, I'm gonna zip tape the seams on the OSB. It's about eight, I think it's dark about eight, 10. So we're just trying to get it ready. It's only like a 20% chance of rain, but you never know. Um, good day though, overall. I like the underlay underlayment, super tough. It's 11 mil and I'm tired as <laughs> <laughs> I want dinner.
It's day two of our project. I'm totally beat from working yesterday. Uh, but today we should get to installing some of the actual shingles or panels. And that's what I'm excited about here are these Euro Shield panels I'm using. I contacted them because I wanted something better than shingles. Uh, I don't really like metal and you can't use it in my neighborhood because of the covenants. And I wanted something that was gonna look better and last better. So these are made out of rubber and they look like cedar shakes. So they're basically bomber thick, they're recycled. Um, they're interlocking so that the wind can't blow them off like the bottom of the row hooks into the previous row. A lot of good things about these. Uh, huge thanks to Euroshield for helping us out with these panels and Jennings for helping me get them here. There's 10 pallets. It looks like a lot, uh, but that's what we needed. So uh, without further ado, we're going to climb back up and get back to it. Oh, that feels good. You like? You centered up? Oh, yeah, that feels nice. We're getting going with our metal valley flashings and that's what's going to keep the valley sealed up. And then once we put these in, we're going to put another layer of peel and stick over top going out of the valley 36 inches and that'll really be like triple protected from any leakage in the valleys. Okay, here we're going to see what he does at the top. Matt fabricates the panel that goes at the peak of the valley connection the yeah. same way. This guy's got a professional narrator. Where's our narrator? What if it's him? Well, it might be him. Next, Eric's going to blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you better do that in your next video. You're just jealous. Here's what we came up with. We got our first piece here that uh, basically ends. Pull this one up a second. Basically ends in a, just a cut with a little overlap. We'll exhale all that. And then this piece, I made it up to it there with just a little bend to cap the very top of that piece and a little overlap there. You actually lapped it away from the prevailing winds as well? I did. <laughs> I noticed. I did. Luckily, we had plenty of prevailing winds to judge which way it comes from. If anybody's wondering, I did pay almost $500 for nine of these pieces, which seemed like a lot, but our metal break won't do the um, steel like this, so we had no choice. That's a wrap. So this is the part where we stand around the dumpster when we're done for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. It's, best I get, to lean on it's just, yeah, it's got a good height to just lean on it. it should be like a bar height right here. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you want to lift your drink. I don't. I just put a straw in your pint. You would just have to do this though. So. Yeah. <laughs> or you just lean down and suck it out of a straw. <laughs> is that what you do at night? <laughs> <laughs> that's it for our video today i hope you enjoyed it i did want to add one thing that i don't know if it came through in the video or not but it was super stressful to tear the roof off of your house like i've never done that before just on the account that there could be some freak rainstorm come up and just pour rain while you have nothing on your roof and so there was this huge sense of stress and urgency for me to get it put back. And I was working myself to the point of exhaustion and stressed out. So it was super stressful. I was glad we got it back on without any rain. So that's what I wanted to add. Uh, make sure to check back for the next video where we re-roof the house and get it all finished up, buttoned up, looking awesome. Thanks for building with us. See ya.